You know who's on the line right now? Representative Andy Harris. Hence the doctor theme. That's right. He's a he's a doctor. He's also a, rem- a Republican member of Congress from Maryland, which that, you know, those are rarer than hen's teeth they are. Hey, Congressman, how are you? Hey, good morning. All right, so how's it going to play out? I mean, the House of Representatives has passed uh, you know, this bill that would fund the government but would uh, delay the implementation of the individual mandate and do some other things. And, uh, you know, Harry Reid uh, couldn't even be bothered to get the Senate together until 2 o'clock this afternoon. How's it going to play out? Oh, I don't know, but I will tell you it's very disappointing that the Senate didn't come in on Sunday. They took a couple days off, but, you know, maybe that's the way the Senate does business. Uh, we'll, we'll come back, and uh, I, I, if the Senate rejects our our two proposals, actually we have three because we also have one that will fund the troops in case uh, we do get to a shutdown. And, uh, we, you know, we repeal the medical device tax and we delay Obamacare. If they reject all three, then we'll come back with something else that uh, they'll find hard to reject. All right, so let, let me just bottom line this. The government is going to shut down. It, I mean, is there any way out of it? Uh, I don't think so. I, th- I think with, with Harry Reid not having called the Senate back, uh, it means he wants the government to shut down, and he's going to force it, and he's just going to hope that America doesn't blame the Senate, that they blame the House. All right, but you know what? They are blaming the House. They're saying, oh, you guys are unreasonable. So what's the counterargument? Well, you know, we'll see what, what, what the end of the day brings, but I think that if, for instance, if we attach the bitter amendment, uh, I think America is going to think the Senate's unreasonable by not uh, by not moving forward. Uh, yeah, so, Representative Andy Harris, you you just said that if if the Senate rejects this, and Harry Reid has said he will reject it, then uh, you're going to give him something that he's going to have a hard time rejecting. Is that what you're talking about? It'll be a continuing resolution, but you're going to attach David Vitter's suggestion, which is all members of Congress and their staff members will have to uh, be part of the the Affordable Care Act without a subsidy. Uh, that's right. That's one possibility, and. You know, if Mr. Reid and the Senate Democrats want to reject that and, and uh, allow that special exemption, then, you know, so be it. Uh, we, we will look forward to the 2014 elections if that's the Democrat position. All right, so you seem to sound like you're okay with the idea of a government shut right down right now politically. Uh, your colleague, David Scott from Georgia, he said this about the idea of Republicans being okay with a government shutdown. If you love this country, you would not be closing it down. How would you respond? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he thinks our country is the government uh, by, by that statement, and it couldn't be farther from the truth. You know, the, the founding fathers actually thought that the government was a, actually a necessary evil. Uh, it was not the country. And to equate the uh, big government and the big federal government with what this country is and what this country can do, look, that's, that's the way the Democrats feel about things. We, we have a different opinion. Okay, so let, let, me, let me just say that, you know, as I look at this thing, you guys are, are following regular order. This is this is the you're trying to change the law through the regular process up on Capitol Hill. And you're saying, look, we have this moment where we feel very passionate about it. And we we feel like it's the point where we really have to lay down. But, you know, the president, if he disagrees with something, he just ignores it. The question, though, is at the end of the day, what will the American people say about this? Who will they blame when the government shuts down? Uh, look, I think they're tired of the president uh, not get, not being involved. I mean, he spends more time uh, negotiating with the, the Iranians and the Russians than with with uh, the Republicans in the House. He he couldn't care less about whether or not uh, this shutdown occurs. And uh, I think the Americans are watching the president do nothing. And that's uh, in the end, I think they figure it all out. They figure out that this president is a, you know is a show horse. Yeah. And that's about it. Re- represent- uh, there's no there's no work to be done here. It's just all for show. Representative Andy Harris is our guest, Republican from Maryland, also a, a doctor, so he can give us some insight as to what's going on with this Obamacare rollout. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to happen at least uh, tomorrow. The people are going to have to start signing up uh, since there's not going to be any law passed between now and then. So what's happening with people in their homes right now as they start having to uh, sign up for the Affordable Care Act and the exchanges that have been set up each state? Well, the first thing they'll find out is that it's all very confusing. The second thing is that there are a lot of broken promises. You know, the president came to Prince George's County last week and promised that a family in Maryland can get coverage for $149 a week, uh, a month, rather. Uh, we, we tried to actually confirm that, and we actually couldn't get any information. The insurance commissioner said the rates aren't even published yet. And, uh, you know, the, the president says there are insurance companies who will insure a family in Maryland for $149 a month. That's just not happening. And uh, people are in for a very, very uh, rude awakening 
on October 1st, when they go to to uh, to their healthcare.gov site and they either don't have plans available or they realize that uh, you know they've been hoodwinked about this. They're, you don't get something for nothing, and uh, that's what the president's been promising. But see, that's that's just it. I mean, some people out there believe that oh, that health care is now going to be free. I kid you not. We just had a caller who told us how he met with his staff on Saturday and explained to them what it meant for them and and their, that their health insurance was going to go up as a result of Obamacare. And they said, what? what? We thought it was going to be free. So that's one of The second thing is, you, okay, $149 a month, which you say you can't even confirm, but even if that's the case, it's not much in the way of health insurance. And you tell people you got to pay one hundred and thirty forty nine dollars, and you're not paying anything right now. They say, "Well, I'm not going to do that." And they say, "Okay, then you're going to be fined." I don't think yes. they know that either. Absolutely, we couldn't get any information. You know that that plan. And first of all, you know we did get information on the individual plan, and the number he quoted in his speech was thirty percent less than the number people are actually going to have to pay. Again, he's making all kinds of promises. People are in for a very rude awakening. Those uh, stripped-down policies are ones where you may have to pay five or six thousand dollars out of your pocket first before insurance kicks in. People aren't going to be expecting this. You're absolutely right. There are a lot of Americans who think health care is now going to be free, just like they thought when the president got elected that you know they're not going to have to make mortgage payments or car payments. And the president saying that health care insurance is going to be cheaper than a cell phone bill. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I don't know what kind of cell phone bills he runs up. But uh, there is no way on God's green earth that that's going to be true. Congressman, we've got to go, but real fast, when you talk to leadership, are they concerned, are they worried that they're going to lose re-election because of a potential shutdown? I think it's all how we frame the issue. I think if we frame the issue right, they realize that the American people are going to be with us on this. All right. All Congressman right. Harris, thanks for joining us. Good luck today. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Thanks. We'll be watching.